hey guys you're welcome back to my channel today thank you so much for stopping by in this video i'll be teaching you guys how to draft and sew this crop top this box crop top with palazzo pants if you're interested keep on watching and let's get started so we'll start by drafting out our pants first i'm going to go ahead and take out 1.5 inches because i want to add a band to my pants and i'm going to measure the full length of my pants which is going to be 45 inches so if you want to add a band go ahead and take out um the measurement that's how wide you want your band to be so i want my band to be one and a half inches wide so i'm taking out one and a half inches before i start taking my point the first point i'll take is the distance from my waist to my hip so the start of the this pattern paper is going to serve as my waist um point so i'm going to go down by eight inches which is the distance from my waist to my hip i'm going to mark the eight inches and i'm going to rule a straight line across and i'll label the line my hip line i will also label the start of this pattern paper as my waist line the next point i'll take is my crotch line so to get your crotch line a video is going to be displayed on the screen on how i normally get mine there are other ways you can get your crotch line but this is more accurate for me so i'm going to place my tape just like you see me doing from my body button a little above my body button to my back and whatever i get i'm going to divide it into two so what i had was 30 inches i divided the 30 by 2 which gave me 15 inches after taking out the 1.5 inches for my band i went down by 15 inches and i rolled a straight line across and i labeled it my crotch line the next point is my tie line which is my lap line i'll go down by four inches from my crotch line and i'm going to rule a straight line across that point and i'll label it my tie line after getting all my lines the next thing i'm going to do is to place my hip circumference divided by four plus one inch on the waistline so my hip circumference divided by four is 10 inches plus one inch for ease is 11 inches so i'm going to mark 11 inches on the waistline i'll place the same 11 inches on the hip line i'll also place the same 11 inches on the crotch line and i'll connect the three dots into a straight line The next thing I'll do is to get my crotch extension line. To do that, I'm going to place my tape on this crotch line and I'll measure what I have, which is 11 inches. After doing that, I'm going to divide that 11 inches by 4. So I'll divide it by 2. What I have is 5.5 inches. And then I'll divide the 5.5 inches by another 2. And what I had was 2 and quarter inch. I'm going to approximate it and make it 3 inches. So I'm going to now place it 3 inches after the straight line. So look at the way I'm placing my tape. I'm extending the crotch line to get my crotch extension line. I'm going to mark the 3 inches with a dot. After doing that, I'm going to now connect from that 3 inches to meet the hip line using my curved ruler. In case you don't have a curved ruler, you can use your free hand just like you see me doing after doing that we have our crotch extension line the next thing i'll do is to place my waist circumference divided by four on the waistline so look at the way i'm placing my tape i'm placing from the crotch area this time around so my waist circumference divided by four is 7.5 inches i'll mark that i'm going to add one inch for that and i'm going to add 1.5 inches for stitching allowance okay after doing that i'm going to use my ruler to connect from that point to meet the hip line remember we already have our hip circumference divided by four plus one inch for ease on the hip line so i'm not going to place anything on the hip line i'm just going to connect from the waist to meet the hip like this after doing that this is what i have the next thing i'm going to do is to take in my darts so since i'll be joining the crotch line 
I'm going to go ahead and take one inch for my joining allowance for the crotch area. After doing that, I'm going to place my tape from that one inch to get half of my nipple to nipple measurement, which is four inches. I'll mark the four inches. On that mark, I'm going to go down by three inches, which is going to be the length of my dart, and I'll connect into a straight line like this. After doing that, I'm going to take half an inch on both sides. Remember, we left one inch for the dart, so half an inch from up plus half an inch is one inch. I'll take half an inch on both sides of this straight line and I'll connect like this. The next thing I'll do is to determine how wide I want my palazzo pant to be. So it totally depends on you. If you don't want it too wide, go ahead and place your round tie, your round lap measurement divided by two, not by four. And whatever you have, you can go ahead and just add two to three inches okay depends on how wide you want your pants to be but for me i want it to be very free so i just connected from my crotch extension line down so you can tell that this palazzo is going to be really big so what i'll do is to connect from that point down to the um length of my pants so like i said before if you don't want it to be too big go ahead and place your round lap um, measurement divided by two and then add two inches or three inches after doing that i'll go ahead and cut after cutting guys this is what i have so this is the front pattern we are going to place this front pattern on our fabric we'll cut out the front first and then we'll use this pattern to draft out the back so what i'll do is to fold my fabric into two equal halves and i'm going to pin my pattern paper on it and then i'm going to trim it just the way it is remember we already added our stitching allowance so i'm just going to cut all the way around so this is the front pattern after cutting out we'll now use the pattern to draft out the back After tracing out what I have on the pattern paper, this is what it looks like. I'll go ahead and remove my pins. After doing that, my fabric is already folded um, right sides facing each other. What I'll do is to pin the crotch area together. After pinning, go ahead and notch your darts and then use the one inch allowance that we left to sew the crotch area together and then take in your darts. So for the back, I'll go ahead and fold my fabric into two and then I'll place my pattern paper like this. So place your pattern paper in such a way that you have about two to three inches on the upper part and you have about four inches on the crotch area of your fabric. So as you can see, I have three inches on the upper part of my fabric and on the crotch area also, I also have excess fabric because we'll be needing it to extend the crotch area so this is what i have the first thing i'll do is to go ahead and extend my crotch line okay just so the crotch line of the front and the back is sitting together by the time i'm done sewing so go ahead and extend it and make sure they are sitting together after doing that the next thing i'm going to do is to extend the crotch um line so remember we extended the back the front cross line by three i'm still going to extend the back by three because this is where your both is going to be sitting and if you're on the bigger side you are going to now extend this um back so i'm going to extend the back by three inches if you are not on the bigger side you can do two inches or 1.5 inches so i'll mark three inches i'm extending from this pattern paper by three inches as you can see this three inches is not the standard at all so for me i'll be sewing my zipper to the back so this three inches is more than enough for me for my butt to sit and for me to also sew my zipper so i connected the three inches into a straight line like this okay and then i'm going to go up from this pattern paper by two inches i'm doing this because i want my butt area to be fully covered when i wear my pants okay so i'll go by two inches and i'll connect it like this to meet the extension that i made on the back of this um pattern paper so i'm going to connect them together like this so i've extended my waist area by 
3 inches so please pay close attention so you don't get confused after doing that i'll continue extending this crotch line by 3 inches this time in a curve i'm going to curve from that 3 inches crotch extension to meet this part just like this the next thing I'll do is to also extend the leg of my pants because we have already extended the um, crotch area. So I'm going to extend the leg by 2.5 inches. So I'm going to mark 2.5 inches all the way to the end of the pants. After doing that, I'll go ahead and work on the waist area. So I'm going to place my tape on the pattern paper and I'll measure what I have. What I have is about 10 and quarter inch. Since we have already extended the waist area by 3 inches, the waist of the back is going to start from that extension. So I'll place my tape from that extension and I'll mark 10 and quarter inch, which is what I have on the pattern paper because the waist of the front and the back is supposed to be the same. So I'm going to place my tape in a slant just like you can see and I'll mark the 10 and quarter. The tape is not straight so I'm going to now place my ruler and I'll connect in a slanted form just like this to meet the 10 and quarter mark like this. After doing that this is going to be the new waistline for the back. Okay, so it's the same measurement that we have on the pattern paper for the front, so you don't have to worry. What I'll do next is to extend my hip um, line just so I know where the hip is on the fabric. And I'm going to remove the pattern paper. And then I'm now going to connect from that 10 and quarter on the new waistline to meet the hip line. After connecting the line, this is what I have. I will bring down my paper and I'm going to go ahead and connect the sides like this. I'm not going to add any stitching allowance to the side. So I'm just going to cut through that line. So we are done with the back. What I'm going to go ahead and do is to cut. So pay close attention so you know where to cut. After cutting, I'm going to go ahead and pin the crotch line just like i did for the front and then i'm going to sew the crotch line using my stitching allowance and then i will notch my darts and i will also take in my darts so guys next thing we'll do is to draft out the top so i already drafted out the top before but i lost the clip so i'm refilming it for you guys so this is the pattern paper for the top the first thing you do is to determine the length of your top so i'm going to be using 18 inches because it's a crop top the next thing i'm going to do is to take my zipper allowance so in case you want to add a zipper to your top Go ahead and take your zipper allowance i'm taking 1.5 inches and i'll be using this pattern to draft for both the front and the back so i'm going to rule a straight line on the dot this is zipper allowance the next thing i will do is to start marking out my point so the distance from my shoulder to my chest line is 8 inches i will indicate that the distance from my shoulder to my bust point is 11 inches i also indicate that with a dot and the length of my top is going to be 17 inches i also indicate that with a dot after doing that i'm going to rule a straight line across all these dots so i have the chest line the bust line and the waist line which is going to be the length of the top the next thing i'll do is to take half of my shoulder measurement i'm taking this measurement after the straight line half of my shoulder measurement is 8 inches i'll mark the 8 inches on that dot i'll go down by one inch for my shoulder slope and i'll stand from that point into the neckline area after doing that guys i'm going to mark the same eight inches that i have on this shoulder line i'm going to mark it on the chest line so place your tape and make sure you have 
um your half of your shoulder measurement on the um shoulder line place that same measurement on the chest line and connect the two dots into a straight line after doing that guys the next thing i'm going to do is to place my tip on this straight line and whatever i have i'm going to divide it into two equal halves so what i have is seven inches half of seven inches is 3.5 inches i'll indicate the 3.5 inches with a dot after doing that i'm going to come in like this on that 3.5 inches mark by half an inch i'll indicate the half an inch with a dot next thing i'm going to do is to place my tip on the chest and and i'll take my bust circumference divided by four i'll indicate that with a dot i'm going to add one inch to that measurement for ease and i'll add one inch for stitching allowance okay so the one inch for ease is not the stitching allowance it's just to make the top free i'm going to just stitch with one inch so i'm going to use my ruler to connect from the shoulder line to meet the half an inch and from that point to meet the dots that i have on the chest line just like this after doing that on the waistline i'm going to place my waist circumference divided by four and i'm going to add one inch for ease and i'll add one inch for stitching allowance so in case you want to add a dart to your top go ahead and also add your dart allowance and taking your dart but this top is kind of free so i'm not going to add that to it okay after doing that i'll connect from the waistline to meet the bust line like this the next thing i'm going to do is take my neckline measurement so for the neck width i don't want to add a zipper to this top so i'll be taking four inches for the width and for the depth of the back i'll go down by one inch i'll use my ruler to connect like this after connecting i'll extend it to meet the zipper allowance so that is if you are adding a zipper to your top so i'll just extend this um 1.5 inches which is the width of my um neckline for the back i'll connect it like this after doing that i'm going to determine how deep i want the front neckline to be so for the front neckline i'm going to go down by about 3.5 inches because i don't want it to choke me since i'm not adding a zipper so i'm going to connect to meet the four inches um width just like you see me doing after doing that guys next thing i'm going to do is to label the back neckline and the front neckline like i said before we'll be using this pattern to cut both the front and the back so we'll trim out the back first use it to cut the back and then cut out the front for the zipper area i'm going to adjust the zipper area we already have 1.5 inches as our zipper allowance so on the waistline i'm going to reduce i'm going to take out one inch from the 1.5 inches okay and i'm going to connect like this so what is left on the waistline is half an inch this is to avoid zip bulge so i'll connect like this after doing that guys that is all so i'm going to go ahead and cut so i'll be cutting the back arm off first and the back neckline first okay so after cutting if you don't want to add a zipper to your top go ahead and fold in the zipper allowance and then you are going to place this on your fabric folded into two and you are going to cut but if you want to add a zipper go ahead and place it like this on your fabric use it to cut out the back first and then fold it in and use it to cut out your front the next thing we'll cut out is our sleeves so the length of my sleeves is 11 inches what i'm going to do is to come inward like this by three inches I'm going to indicate the three inches with a dot after doing that on the other end of the fabric i'm going to go down by about five or six inches i'll start with five inches so i'll go down by five inches i'll indicate the five inches with a dot after doing that i'm going to connect i'm going to slant from these three inches just like you see me doing to me the five inches so this is a box top and the armhole area is not that deep that is why i'm using a slant that's why i'm slanting so after slanting i'm going to place my tape and i'm going to measure what i have okay so the round arm o measurement i'm working with is 21 inches 
and I need to add stitching allowance to it. After marking what I had was 11 inches, I'll still go down by 6 inches since this is not enough. The 5 inches that I went down with is not enough for me. So I'll go in and adjust into the 6 inches. After doing that, I'm going to measure what I have. So what I have right now is 11.5 inches. I'll times it by 2. 11.5 times 2 is 23 inches. And what I really need is 21 inches. So it is better to be on the safer side. So this 11.5 inches is more than enough for me. The next thing I'm going to do mind is how free you want the sleeves area to be so you can decide to take your round um, um circumference divided by two and then you add your stitching allowance but for me i want it to be really free so i'm just going to connect straight down just like you see me doing but if you want it to be free go ahead and add your round arm um, circumference um divided by two and then add like one inch for stitching allowance okay so i'm just going to connect straight down just like you see me doing after connecting i'll go ahead and cut so make sure that when you are cutting you cut on fold so i'm writing that down on my pattern paper okay you're going to cut on fold and you're going to notch the center okay so that is all for the sleeves so guys i've gone ahead to join the crotch area of my pants and i've also taken in my dart and this is what i have remember we left one inch as our stitching allowance for the crotch area so i used the one inch to join the crotch area and i took in my dart after doing that this is what i have for the front and for the back i also went ahead to do the same thing i sewed my crotch area in place and i also took in my dart so for the crotch area of the back i didn't sew one inch I sewed 1.5 inch because that is where I'll be attaching my zipper and I also sewed it with a gather stitch because I'm still going to lose it. The next thing I'll do is to arrange the front and the back piece together just like you see me doing. I'm going to sew the sides using my stitching allowance and I'm also going to sew the crotch area together. After sewing the sides, I'll sew the crotch area together and I'll turn it inside out. So I've gone ahead to do that. I've sewn the sides in place using my stitching allowance. I also went ahead to sew the crotch area together. So what I'm going to do now is to open up the back. Like I said before, I used a gather stitch because I'll be adding, sewing my zipper to the back and i want to sew in my band through the back so i'm going to open it up like this after opening it up i'm going to go ahead and measure around the waist area what i have is what i'm going to use to cut out my band so i'll place my tape and i'll measure the waist area all the way around after measuring what i have is 34 inches i'll be using the 34 inches to cut out my band so this is the band guys um on fold it is two inches and once i open it up it is four inches i went ahead to iron interface into it to strengthen the fabric so i'm going to fold it into two like this what i have is two inches i'll be sewing by half an inch so once i sew by half an inch i'll be left with 1.5 inches which is the actual uh, measurement we took for our band so i'm going to open my fabric right sides facing me and i'm going to place the band on it i'll pin the band all the way around the waist area and i'll go ahead and sew After sewing, I'm going to overlock the waist area and all the rough edges inside. That is why I'm not using the other method to sew my band. So after sewing, this is what I have. So the next thing I'm going to do is to sew my zipper in place. So we already opened up the zipper allowance. So I'm going to sew the zipper in place and then I'm going to hem the base of my pants. And if you don't want to hem the base of your pants, you can use your hemming gum to iron it flat. 
so guys that is all for the pan tutorial i hope it was helpful if you have any question leave it in the comment section so let's finish up the top like i said before i lost the clip for this brown pattern paper so i had to refilm so this pattern paper is the same thing as the white pattern paper the only difference is i'm not adding zipper allowance to my top so i went ahead to increase the length of my top by 1.5 inches just so it's not too short so I, i'm cutting on my pattern paper i went ahead to add half an inch on the shoulder area and i added one inch on the bust area of my pattern paper i also went ahead to cut out the sleeves on my fabric and this is what i have i did not add any stitching allowance to the sleeves so remember that your center front should be on fold and if you are not adding a zipper your center back should also be on fold but if you're adding a zipper your center back should be open for me i'm not adding a zipper so i folded my fabric into four i'm cutting both the front and the back together so i've got ahead to trace out the back neckline leaving me with the front neckline i'll mark the front neck line on my fabric just like you see me doing because i'm about to remove this pattern paper so since i'm not adding a zipper this is my front and my back so i'm going to take out the back and i'm going to arrange the front like this after doing that i'm going to trim out the front neckline after trimming out the neckline this is what i have for the front and this is what i have for the back the next thing i'll do is to go ahead and cut out a facing that i'll be using to conceal the neckline so in case you don't have enough fabric to cut out your facing you can use your bias to pipe the neckline so i've gone ahead to cut out my facing which i'm going to be trimming later and if you are taking in your darts you can take in your darts at this point so this is my facing i'm still going to trim it but i'm going to place it on the neck area like this on the neckline area sorry and i'm going to pin all the way after pinning i'll repeat the same thing for the front i'll pin and then i'll go ahead and sew after sewing i'm going to join the two shoulders that the shoulder for the front and the shoulder for the back together i've gone ahead to conceal my neckline and i've sewed the shoulders in place the next thing i'm going to do is to bring in my sleeves so i've already notched the center of my sleeves i'm going to go ahead and place the sleeves on the armhole area of the top so i'll place the notched area of the sleeves on the shoulder area the part that i joined on the shoulder just like this and i'll pin all the way around after pinning i'll head over to my sewing machine and i'll sew all the way around after sewing i'll also go ahead and m the base of the sleeves by folding it into two like this i'll m all the way around i've gone ahead to sew the sleeves in place what i'll do is to turn the fabric to the wrong side and i'm going to use my stitching allowance of one inch to join the sides after joining the sides i'll also end the base of the top and that is all for this tutorial i hope it was helpful guys don't forget to like this video leave your questions in the comment section thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one